Hi, I'm Lizzie. And I'm Doug. And we teach A-Level History at Havant and South Downs College. If you choose A-Level History at Havant and South Downs, you will fo follow the ACWA syllabus. All students will follow the uh, Making of Modern Britain, the uh, 1951 to 2007, and then you have a choice of either following the Germany pathway or the pathway that looks at modern USA. There are two coursework choices and you do two exams at the end of the two year study, for which you get 80% of your marks. Your coursework is 20%. Um, what kind of skills can you get from studying history? Um, there's a plethora of different things that you can get really, but critical reasoning and analytical skills, intellectual rigor and independence, and the ability to construct an argument and communicate findings in a clear and persuasive manner. There are quite a few jobs associated with studying history. Um, obviously you can do a degree in history at university, um, but you don't have to kind of go on to be a historian uh, following this. A lot of jobs um, are associated with these skills, even coding um, and computing skills, really. The Making of Modern Britain looks at a number of different issues, economic, political, social and cultural. We're just going to go through a few slides which show you some of the different types of things that you might look at and some some you may recognize the emperor empire windrush for example looks at the history of uh, our multicultural society we look at politics we look at political scandals for example perfumo the 1960s the swinging britain we uh, we examine if that's a, a true reflection a true description of britain obviously the um the party or in Paris Labour with Harold Wilson, but we also look at things like the Beatles, the class system, uh, women, race, um, teenagers, etc, etc. As you come into the 1970s, there are um, challenges in British history and we study some of the challenges between 70 and 79. As you come into the 1980s, we move on to Margaret Thatcher, the breaking of the consensus the miners' strike, the growth and disappearance of the SDP, the Falklands War, and then into the fall of Thatcher, the John Major years. Again, we have the themes of race, uh, gender, um, uh, some of the anti-establishment protests and the rise of New Labour and Tony Blair. Finally, we have the era of New Labour, which takes us up to 2007 and ends just before the Iraq War. Yeah, a following on from this, uh, if you follow the European, the Germany pathway, uh, we look at Germany's role from its unification in 1871 all the way through to its reunification at the end of the Cold War in 1991, looking at how Germany's governs, how effective oppositions are in, in Germany at the time, how and what results did the economy develop and change, the extent of social and cultural change, and the importance of key individuals and groups in affecting these developments. The first year you look at Germany um, as it unifies from 1871 and you end in 1929, just as the Wall Street crash has happened. And then in the second year, we pick up with the Nazi um, era and then we go all the way through to um, the reunification in uh, 1991. Um, there you can just see some of the images that we look at. The First World War, the, um, the hyperinflation, the statue is Bismarck, the, um, uh, the leader that you, uh, unified Germany, and the, um, the times of the 1920s when things seem to have been better, but of course then leading into uh, the Nazi era. And similarly here, the, the parts of the second year study looking at the Nazis, um, their time in power through to the end of the Second World War, and then the divisions of East and West Germany, um, following on through the Cold War up until the end of the, the units uh, with the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, if you instead choose the USA pathway, um, similar time frame 1865 to 1975 starts at the end of the Civil War all the way through to the Vietnam War, looking at changes of government, politics, changing society and economy, role of USA in this period, those kind of broad themes. Uh, first year, looking at the era of reconstruction, all the way through um, to the end of the First World War. And then the second year, primarily focusing on USA as a superpower, militarily and economically. Um, so we look at race, we look at the people in power, we look at segregation um, through that first year and the second year as well, uh, which kind of leads to 
looking at prominent figures change in society throughout the periods. Uh, and that's, that's what we study here at A-Level History at uh, HSDC Havants. Um, hope to see you soon. We look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Faye Brown, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about A-Level Ancient History, which I teach alongside Emma Mintram. Uh, my email address is on the screen if you want to contact me. You can do Ancient History as one of your three or maybe four A-Levels, maybe alongside an extended project here at HSDC at Haven Campus. We study four units. The first year you do a Greek unit and then a Roman unit. So we look at the fifth century BC in Greece from the Persian War through to the Great Peloponnesian War, which is a conflict between Athens and Sparta, which runs for nearly 30 years. So we're really interested in how and why the Greeks came together and then all came apart, started fighting against each other. Um, all in the space of a century. It's a very busy time. It's also the time when um, a lot of the artistic things are happening in Greece. So it's quite interesting to compare the two. We then look at the Julio-Claudian emperors. Um, so here you're going to study sort of the first century AD and a bit of the first century BC in Rome. So you're looking at from the emperor Augustus who seized power in 31 BC and then through his lines he'll do Tiberius and then Gaius or Caligula, who you've probably heard of maybe through horrible histories or something like that, and then Claudius, and then the Emperor Nero, who's very well known for allegedly burning down Rome, saying his, all the politicians are so stupid that he might as well make his horse a politician. Again, he's quite likely to have featured in horrible histories. In the second year, we look a bit more in depth at a couple of topics. The first is Roman Britain, so the invasion in 43 under Claudius, and then how life changed here. So all the way up to, although the Romans kind of, they go to Scotland, they go all the way around, and then they get beaten and they come back down, they build a wall at Hadrian's Wall. So it's, we, we stop at that point. So we're looking at how, how much life really changed for people that lived here. Then we look at the strangeness of Sparta and how it changes your whole society when everything is organised about creating perfect soldiers. So we have women in positions of more uh, authority than they might have normally. We have children living away from home and a very, very strange world indeed. If you've seen 300, you might recognise the Spartans from there. We'll do two exams, one for each um, civilization, and there is no coursework. You might look at classical civilization and ancient history and archaeological evidence. So the, what the first ancient history is a history course, so we look at historical evidence, but we also draw in some of the cultural evidence which you might study in classical civilization. And because we do Roman Britain, we do draw in quite a lot of archaeological evidence because there's not very much written about Britain because it's not that important. So after the first invasion, an awful lot of our work relies on the archaeology, which is a good skill. We do a range of work, including using booklets of original sources which you can study and read. You might be asked to watch a documentary for homework and then feedback on it, or indeed um, listen to a podcast. We do go on trips. Our most recent is the Greece Residential, which is a six day tour of key sites. Also, the British Museum and Fishbowl Palace is a set site for your second year. Roman Britain course, so if you have been before, you'll be seeing it through new eyes. You don't need to have a history GCSE or have studied um, the ancient world before, although if you have got an enthusiasm, that's brilliant. We imagine everyone starting from scratch. You can do classics and ancient history together. It's a bit like doing Shakespeare and Tudor history, so different skills. You don't need to be able to read in Latin or Greek. You'll get all of your sources in translation. And the key is, an ancient history is a history course, but we just don't do coursework. So we hope to see you. There's an awful lot of transferable skills in ancient history, which are useful for a range of university courses, particularly in the humanities area, although we have people who are scientists and are doing this for interest. It's really important that you're able to learn how to analyse and evaluate somebody else's point of view in addition to presenting your own. So critical thinking skills are really important transferable skills that you will gain in ancient history. So really hope that we see you soon. Bye-bye. Classical Civilization A-Level course. My name is Emma and I teach classics here at HSDC Haven't alongside Vicky Doxat and I'm going to give you a brief overview of what Classical Civilization A-Level entails. We often get asked, what is classical civilization? In short, classics is the study of culture of the culture and society in both Greece and Rome. 
We study ancient literature and modern scholarly articles, archaeology, ancient thoughts and ideas, and the ancient historical context. Many of the discussions that we have in classics are directly relevant to those of today. For example, life and death, love, family and children. More specifically, we study three units in classics. In the world of the hero unit, we'll be reading and analysing two ancient texts and the historical context within which these were written. We read Homer's Odyssey in the first year, which is an epic tale of Odysseus and his 10 year journey home after the Trojan War and forms one of the earliest and greatest works of Western literature. We'll read of the perils which Odysseus has to face, including sea monsters, shipwrecks and mythological creatures, and how he uses his cunning to overcome these and make it home to Ithaca. In the second year, we'll read Virgil's patriotic epic, The Aeneid, which is a story of Aeneas, a surviving Trojan who makes a long journey following his fate to found Rome. In this unit, we'll answer questions such as how involved were the gods in getting these warriors home? How were women portrayed? And to what extent were these men heroes? We will also study Greek religion in the first year. This unit will include the study of ancient thoughts and the nature of the gods and their relationship to mankind, as well as studying ancient literature to uncover the functions of the gods, how they were worshipped, including rituals and cults, and the rise of philosophical thinking with Socrates and Xenophanes. We'll also analyse ancient religious sites, including the Acropolis at Athens and the sites of Delphi and Olympia, to try to understand the importance of these sites to the ancient Greeks. In the second year, students will study Greek theatre, we will analyse ancient literature in the forms of plays and also the archaeology of the physical theatre space used by the Greeks. The plays we look at are Oedipus by Sophocles, the tale of the man who brought a great pollution to Thebes by unknowingly killing his father and marrying his mother. The Frogs by Aristophanes, which is a comedy that tells of Dionysus, the god of wine, travels to the underworld to bring back the tragedy in Euripides. And finally, the Bacchae by Euripides which is a tragedy about the mistreatment of Dionysus by King Pentheus. We do try to go on day trips throughout the year and a residential around February. The Greece residential is not compulsory and getting good grades is not dependent on whether you go on this trip. However, it is extremely useful and very relevant to the course. For example, we will go and visit the Acropolis at Athens, um, Olymp Olympia and Delphi and Mycenae, all of which are covered in the Classics A-level course. The following skills are gained from a classical civilization A-level, which is why Classics is looked on favourably by most employers and universities, regardless of what you choose to do. Mary Beard is a Classics professor at King's College and an author of many books, including SPQR. She explains that it's the perfect A-level to do with any subject because the Greeks invented all academic disciplines. Comic, mi common misconceptions are, you need to have studied classical civilizations at school to complete the A-level. This is incorrect. Classics at GCSE is not available at many schools and it's not necessary for you to even have taken history. You need to have studied either, either Latin or classical Greek to complete the classical civilization A-level. This is not the case. Again, Latin and classical Greek are not available at many schools. We only learn about Greece. As from 2018, we now study Virgil's Aeneid, which is a Roman text and the context in which it was written. And classics is not worth taking unless you're pursuing a career in either history, classics or archaeology. Again, this is not true. Employers look favourably on people who have studied classics because of the transferable skills gained. Progression routes and career opportunities. Students of classic, classical civilizations at A-level have gone on to study many different areas of higher education, from architecture to medicine, from science to the arts. But if you do wish to take classics further, some of the jobs available to you would be um, an archivist, archaeologist, exhibition officer, a museum, um, teacher, and many more. There is no limit to what you can do with this subject. So familiar names who study classics, um, Tolkien and Tom Hiddleston and J.K. Rowling have all studied classics in their life. Uh, J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter books, you may have already noticed that classics influenced her writing. For example, the character names can be found throughout Greek and Roman history. Severus means severe in Latin and was a Roman emperor. Minerva was the Roman goddess of wisdom. And in Latin, lupin mean, means wolf. Accio means I summon, crucio means I torture, and reparo means to put back together, and many more. So thank you.
for listening. Um, please feel free to contact me by my email if you have any more questions and I hope to see you in 2021. Hello, my name is Andros Shorupa. I'm the course manager of Politics A-Level at Havent. Politics is a subject that you might have heard about uh, at school, but you probably don't really know what it involves. It involves um, the study of institutions and people uh, and how they will share power or negotiate power. Um, so the subject will uh, cover things such as the governmental system, um, the ideas and philosophies that uh, different types of people have, such as socialists and conservatives, liberals and feminists. You'll be studying two year, for two years, you'll be studying um, British politics in year one. You'll be looking at elections, pressure groups, political parties and um, how people vote. You'll be looking at recent general elections and uh, how they turned out. You'll be looking at liberalism, conservatism and socialism. You'll then be looking uh, halfway through the year at Parliament, the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. You'll be looking at the EU, you'll be looking at the UK Supreme Court and you'll be really um, moving on to then um, study um, the idea of feminism in a, a lot of detail. So you'll be spending uh, about a third of your time with um, ideas and philosophies to do with politics. After the first year, the second year covers um, the American system of government. You'll be looking at a comparative course, looking at Britain and the U US um, throughout. So you'll be looking at presidencies and prime ministers, the two Supreme Courts, uh, the two electoral systems uh, and, and so on. You'll be looking at uh, various American institutions of government with uh, th a theory in mind. So we'll be looking at how different political actors operate. Politics at Havent has achieved um, in recent years very high value added grades. In other words, we work the students uh, from a, a modest base when they come in um, through their course, supporting them with extra uh, curricular activities, aim higher groups and others and um, and other types of support such as um, how to write essays and if you come with the basic grades, grade five in English alongside five other passes, um, you will find that you'll be able to cope and access the types of assessments that we use. We also enrich you uh, during the course with various trips. Unfortunately, COVID has kind of robbed us of that in the last year. However, by the time you get here, we are hoping that COVID will have gone away and that we'll be able to take some trips to, to uh, Washington DC and indeed uh, around uh, Europe and certainly to, to see Parliament again. However, for free, we offer uh, various support, as I've already mentioned, including sessions before 10 o'clock, um, where we can do a debating society at the moment, we will try. Um, we also offer extra help for people applying to Russell Group and Oxford and Cambridge Colleges. You will, of course, be spending a great deal of your time reading different texts, thinking about issues and um, uh, analyzing questions and therefore you will be uh, really in a great position to join a university uh, and do a, 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 um, a humanities course or indeed um, a mixed program you also will be in a great opportunity to uh, you will have a great opportunity to study um, other courses maybe at a high level um, with these skills that you will learn if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me, Andros at uh, Haven Campus. My email is on the slide. Thank you for listening. Hope to talk with you very soon. Bye.
Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, this video will go over studying religious studies at Havant and South Downs College. So if you choose to study religious studies, uh, you can expect to encounter uh, three main subjects. So we have philosophy of religion, ethics and Buddhism. So in philosophy, we begin with philosophy of religion and we we'll start off with uh, ancient Greek philosophers. So we start off at the basis uh, of philosophy. Uh, with Plato and Aristotle. We then move into more accepted sort of uh, Christian uh, theories when we look at the, um, the relationship of the soul to the body and also when we look at the uh, arguments for the existence of God. So we'll look at a few, a few different arguments for the existence of God and then we'll also discuss the existence of evil and the existence of God together in the inconsistent triad. Uh, when we look at ethics, uh, in religious studies we have four theories of ethics uh, that we will look at in detail. And then what you have to do is you have to apply those theories to uh, certain moral dilemmas. So the ethical theories we look at are utilitarianism, situation ethics, natural law and Kantian ethics. And then we will apply those theories to um, the ethical dilemmas of euthanasia and business ethics. So the third subject is Buddhism and we will begin Buddhism by studying uh, the life of the Buddha. Uh, we then move on to some of the famous parts in the religion such as the three marks of existence and the four noble truths. We also do uh, certain topics as well dealing with uh, Buddhism and gender and also um, how Buddhism reacts to uh, political and social uh, awareness, environmental factors. So in religious studies there are three exams at the end of the two years. All of the three exams are two hours long and all of the three exams have four questions where you have to do three. So you, you're doing three essays uh, for each exam. If you'd like any more information about uh, religious studies at Haven College, then the exam board is OCR. Alternatively, you can email the college and ask for me, uh, Raymond Whelan, or the other teacher of religious studies is John Leadbeater, and we'll give you any information uh, you need. Thanks very much for watching, and hope to see you in college soon. Hello and thank you very much for joining me. This is a quick video on the philosophy course at Haven South Downs College. So the philosophy course at um, Haven College, it comprises of four units. So the first unit is called epistemology, where in this unit you will study uh, the theory of knowledge. So basically it's how does information from around reality get into your head and how do you understand it. So there are different theories of knowledge that we go into in detail and then you would form your own conclusions from these uh, different theories. The next topic you will look at in philosophy is moral philosophy. And so in moral philosophy we take three ethical theories and then we apply those ethical theories to certain ethical dilemmas. So the three ethical theories we look at are virtue ethics, which is an ancient Greek type of um, philosophy or ethical theory. Uh, we have utilitarianism and we have Kantian ethics. And then what we need to do then is apply those to ethical dilemmas uh, such as eating animals, the morality of eating animals, uh, telling lies, stealing and violence in video games. The next topic you will study is metaphysics of mind. This deals with the relationship of the mind to the body to the soul. So you have various theories explaining how the, basically the cinema screen in your head uh, corresponds to your body and how it interacts with your body. And then is there a soul, what is it made of, what is it and different explanations for what a soul is as well. The final topic that you look at is metaphysics of God. So this is basically how we speak about God or how we speak about the universe. So you look at different interpretations of God, uh, different like uh, ex explanations of the attributes of God, but you'll also look at different explanations of how, how God can exist. So certain arguments by different philosophers which prove or disprove or leave it ambiguous uh, the existence of God. So if you would like more information about studying philosophy at Haven College, the exam board is AQA. And if you'd like any information, you can always email the college and ask for me, Raymond Whelan, or the other teacher, John Leadbeater, and we'll be more than happy to email you back with some information.
So thank you very much for watching today and looking forward to seeing you in college next year.